I am joined by Democrat Justin Fleming, former mental health and child advocate, and also Republican Therese Lamel Kenley, who has 25 years experience in state government and also served as the Director of Communications for the House Republicans. Thank you both for being with us. Let's get to our rules for this debate. They are, we have three issues. Each of you will get to respond and offer a rebuttal to your opponent's response. Responses will be limited to 45 seconds. Rebuttals, 30 seconds. To determine who answers first, we're using alphabetical order of your last names for the first two questions and a pre-debate coin flip for the third. Justin Fleming will go first based on the last name. So our first issue for you, we're talking about these high gas prices that we're all seeing at the pumps. Pennsylvania's gas tax is one of the highest in the nation. It's around 60 cents a gallon. Is that too high? Also, what's the best way to fund bridge and road repairs and the state police? Thank you, Caitlin, for this opportunity. I really appreciate uh, the chance to be here. Gas prices are high right now and gas taxes are high. The, the really difficult thing is that legislation was passed in 2012 to raise the taxes to where they are. And if you, a tax holiday is not a bad idea, but what happens is if we institute that, then we're taking away money from fixing our roads and bridges, which are in desperate need of repair. Um, I think the federal infrastructure bill that was just passed not too long ago uh, gives us some hope to try and repair our roads and bridges. Uh, I am not in favor of tolling uh, local roads or uh, local highways around uh, the Harrisburg area, I-81, I-83, I'm not in favor of that. But it would be difficult to uh, institute a holiday right now just because it starves our roads and bridges of needed funding. Same question to you, Ms. Kenley. I have to, well, thank you for inviting me. And I, I have to agree with Justin in that the, our tolls, our, our roads and bridges are in constant need of repair because of our location. You know, the, the, our roads and bridges expand and contract and then as, as we cut back on our, our, our exploration of our natural resources, then the cost is going to be higher even to do that. But I, I don't think that the gas tax should be messed with, you know, at, at this point, because we are in constant need of, of repair. You have 30 seconds to continue your comments. You know, one way to get at this issue is something that the federal government, I think, has done well, which is incentivizing electric vehicles, hybrid vehicles. Uh, the less fuel we use, uh, the, the less dependence we have on oil. Uh, we need to have an all hands on deck energy strategy in order to, to deal with high prices at the pump so it doesn't affect so many people. So I think incentivizing uh, other modes of transportation, public transit, as well as uh, hybrid and electric vehicles is the right way to go. Ms. Kenley, you have 30 seconds to respond. Uh, I, 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 I agree with that. You know, that we have to go all hands on deck, everything, especially here in Pennsylvania. We have too many natural resources that need to be explored. Let's move on to our next topic then, and that is education funding. How do we better fund our schools and more fairly fund them? Ms. Kenley? Well, my issue is that, uh, okay, we're a gambling state, and uh, we've been funding the schools through our property taxes. And I believe that we should, when, when, the first, when gambling first started being discussed, the idea was, that the revenues would be used for property taxes to relieve them or to eliminate them. That has never come to pass. You know, th there's been a little bit of a change, but I think that is still, uh, especially we are, we, we, Pennsylvania is second only to Vegas in the revenues that are generated from gambling. And that money, and then we're talking about the eye gambling and, you know, and, and regulating the, the uh, uh, the skilled games, and before we do any more with gambling, I think we need to make sure that property taxes are addressed. Mr. Fleming, same question. I mean, this is one of the biggest issues that I get on doors. A lot of seniors are um, in in difficult positions. They they even though their home is paid off, property taxes may force them to lose their home. So this is a really tough issue. I think. You know, what is not uh, in dispute is that 
the Pennsylvania Constitution calls for a thorough, the, the legislature to provide a thorough and efficient edu uh, education system in this state. So if we infuse more state dollars, uh, because our, our state share of what the state pays for education, for K through 12 public education has been dwindling over the years. If we, if we put that up again, we can reduce property taxes or at least localities don't have to raise taxes year over year. So that's my answer, to infuse more state dollars into the public education system. They've done a good job uh, with level up funding, trying to uh, get some of the uh, less well-funded school districts up to par, but we need to do more. Ms. Kenley, you have 30 seconds to respond. I, I'm, well, we can increase the state funding, but I think we also ought to uh, uh, look at uh, using that state funding to give parents choice on where they want to send their children to school. And the schools have got to be accountable for what is being produced. And if the schools aren't being produced, then why can't we use the state funding to, you know, to, to, encourage or incentivize the the standards to be met and not you know running the standards all you know uh, uh, to go along with what it is socially acceptable mr fleming another 30 seconds to you i mean that sounds good but this is an area where miss kenley and i disagree i think there was a study by the uh, by stanford university uh saying that the performance of charter schools in pennsylvania is no better than brick and mortar k-12 through schools and you know, while charter schools were supposed to be, when they were implemented, uh, schools of innovation, schools of, of different programs and different education uh, learning styles to enhance different learning styles, uh, the fact of the matter is they're just a carbon copy of the system we have, and they are not more effective uh, according to the data. And so, uh, you know, again, it's right now it is siphoning dollars from K-12 education, and, uh, you know, we just need to do a better job there. Our last issue now, and Ms. Kenley did win the coin flip, so this question will go to you first. And we're talking about the state economy. What can you do legislatively to help grow businesses, fill jobs, and deal with the rising prices? Okay, my, my emphasis would be on public-private partnerships with the businesses having some say in the curriculum in the schools. The businesses need to be able to say what they need and then the schools produce what is needed in order to in order to make sure that we have a, a, a workforce that is you know can do the jobs that are here in Pennsylvania and economically uh, I don't know I don't think that that uh, uh, giving a freebie out or increasing the uh, benefits you know increasing benefits for uh, welfare or food stamps is, is the answer. I think that we need to incentivize people to work. At, uh, looking, uh, just looking in the 105th and seeing how many job openings there are and said, why aren't these jobs being filled? And Mr. Ahead. Fleming will mm -hmm. give you 30 Yeah, years. no, I just, um, I think two things, two main things will lock, unlock our economy. If we have a reliable system of health care and if people can find reliable child care. The reason why people aren't going back to work is because they can't find childcare. And we saw this during the pandemic. Mothers who were the primary breadwinners in their homes uh, were, were leaving work to care for their kids during the pandemic when we were all stuck at home. And so those two things would unlock our economy a great deal. Ms. Kenley, it sounds like you did have more to say. You could please continue. Oh, no, I'm, I'm, I'm good. I, I, I just don't, I, I don't think that it's, it's, I think the in, in, incentive needs to be in, making sure people are prepared to do the jobs. And I, I do agree that, you know, child care is an issue and, you know, affordable health care, but, but there's got to be, uh, uh, we have to have a base coming up, not just the people. Who, for example, farmers, the farmers are old. And so they're looking for people to come and work. Okay, let's train, train the students in vocational ed, you know, to know how to farm, to enjoy farming, to incentivize them to go into farming. But, you know, it's that type of a thing that I think the, the emphasis should be on making sure we have a workforce to work with. That is an excellent point. I mean, I, for in my years as a child advocate, uh, I advocated for enhanced funding for career and technical education. I think we made a mistake for 30 years telling every kid that unless they went to college, 
uh, they wouldn't amount to anything. And so to Ms. Kenley's point, now we see forklift operators, uh, pipe fitters, plumbers, uh, electricians right. who are aging out, yeah. uh, you know, and, and farmers. Um, so enhancing programs and, and uh, uh, Governor Shapiro wants to do just that. He wants to enhance programs uh, in, in the high schools uh, to prepare folks for the workforce. And I think that's a great plan. Thank you both for coming here and for speaking with us. We so appreciate it. And there will be more state office debates to come.